Well, on today's episode of What Did I Get Myself Into? We have this rental truck here, which apparently was stolen from somewhere else in the country, not this location. And then it was found, it's all tore up and beat up and lights knocked out of it. There's sand up in here. Man, they hit something good here, wow. Um, yeah, so it was found, I guess, abandoned, whatever, and then it was towed to this location where they're not supposed to have any of these bigger trucks because it's a tight little tiny parking lot. As you can see by the fact that my truck is sideways and this is all the room we have. So, you're not sure how it got towed here. You're not sure how it ended up here at all. When I asked in the office, they said it just appeared here and then they got an email from higher up saying a stolen truck had been dropped off. So, that's been out. So we've got to figure out, one, what is like okay and what isn't in this thing and how I'm going to hook up to it. I have a key because they sent a key to it from wherever it came from to this location. Hopefully it runs, but they said it might not. They didn't know, so if I can get at least out there facing that way and back up to it and leave. If it got towed in, what confuses me is the drive line is still in it. You can see there's the driveline parking brake, which is back here on this truck instead of up here, like on that bus that we kind of screwed up on. But, okay, all the wheels are still here. Um, yeah, the first thing we're going to do, being as this is a stolen truck, is we are going to look in the back of it to make sure what we're transporting. Good, nothing. Wow, look at that. They wrecked those side posts up there. Those uh, supports for the body are all ripped up. A bunch of these sideboards are missing. Huh, okay. Nothing illegal in here. Okay. Seems halfway okay in here. Moment of truth. That runs. They said they didn't think it did. Oh, stop engine it says. Uh, we have oil pressure. Check engine. Okay, oil pressure came up which is what would destroy the engine if it wasn't. So I'm gonna pull my truck forward and then I'm gonna pull it out here and shut it off. It'll be fine. Go up here and make a little room. So I'm just going to pull it around the corner, back it up right here, and then back my truck back into it. Make sure I turn out so I don't hit the corner of the box on that tree. Which I have to do to make my turn anyway. Do we have throttle? We do. Come on, make the turn, make the turn. We got brakes, which is good. Okay. Done with this. And hopefully they don't need to get anything else out of that parking lot because the road is now closed until I'm done. Okay, let's hook this thing up. We gotta uh, it'll probably be fine. Alright, let's uh open up this, bring this down, 
going to flip our receivers, of course, because you always have to flip receivers no matter how you have them. We might have to ratchet strap and bungee cord that fender and headlight on. Let's see how it looks. Okay, which way do we want the receivers? Upright. So we're going to pop these off. We're going to go like this. And then that'll go in there. And look, I left just enough room to squeeze through, totally on purpose, yeah. That's just, that's all experience right there. Luck has nothing to do with it, totally. A few. Lock back in. And we will grab you guys right here. more of that. Okay. Out you go. Um, I think if I slide that in, I can go between those U-bolts. Almost between the U-bolts. Dang it. Over there. <laughs> I did it. Oh, help if I'm there it is. Okay. So we've got it between the U-bolts on both sides so it can't slide side to side. Perfect. Grab me some axle straps. I guess they really wanted this truck out of here because they're not supposed to have any of the bigger trucks in here is what it sounded like. And they don't know why it ever got brought here in the first place. Which, who knows, I'd imagine. Whoever did the recovery on it just took it to the nearest budget, which makes sense and saved them an impound fee if it would have went to the impound instead. So, either way, now we're going to tow it up to Portland, about three hours away. Or I guess they do bigger trucks or maintenance or something, I don't know. I've never done anything for these guys before so I don't know what their whole program is okay now we're going to put this thing in neutral release the parking brake so we pull the drive shaft out of it there we go let's take a roll the window up too Take the key out so it doesn't try to lock it on me since this thing has power locks. bag I'm gonna go pull this drive line out of here let's see I have two pry bars in here that's why I'm missing the one out of my toolbox 
Ziploc bag I've used a hundred times. You, you. Yep. Okay. Get a cable tie. Okay. Hey, stay on there. Guess I can do this way. And then before I pull that last one off. I'll run this through and back through here so that it can't fall to the ground. Okay, there is that. Take a pry bar. I think it's in there. Ugh. Oh man. I have an extra pry bar in here, but I'm missing the hammer. Oh. That's not how things go. You. I'll go back in here. Here. It's wet in here because I pressure washed all this this morning. There you are. Let's smack things. Oh, that loosened it up. Okay, there it is. So if the caps come off easy, I pull the caps off and put them in the bag with the rest of the hardware. If they don't, I just tape the caps on, which is what we're going to do here. Give her a few wraps. Make sure it's nice and tight. So it doesn't want to come off of there. There. Now, we can bring it up here. That ain't going nowhere. That's where you belong. And you guys belong. Okay. Now these go right there, and there's one more thing that goes in here. Hold on. They are. Just 
dry fly. Warning, this vehicle has been altered for towing. I didn't mess with the brakes, the steering, the wheels, or the axles, but I did pull the drive line, so we checked that box, and we put it right here, where it's impossible to miss. There you go. All right. Now, we get our driveline bag put away. We're gonna put our light bar in the back, some safety chains on, and we got this big dip to go out of down here, which is gonna kind of suck, but it'll be fine. We're going to my kind of conundrum at the moment. I don't want to go through the dip and drag the front tires on the ground because when the front tires hit it tries to pull them out of the forks. But I also don't want the back of the truck to go through the dip and drag the tail of the truck on the ground coming out of it. So this is my guess on how high it needs to be. And we're just going to pretend that that's correct for now. So this is a wireless light bar. Some people have asked where the transmitter is that controls it on the truck. And I will show you in just one minute. Not gonna wanna play nice. We'll put it down here. This we go like that. That'll be fine. So wireless light bar whatever my truck does this light bar does oh and it also has the cool guy strobe lights for people who are into that sort of thing but up here through the wind on the back of my truck this is the transmitter that plugs into the trailer socket on the back of my truck and controls that light bar so we are closed up Safety chains, axles tied down, drive lines out of it. We don't hook up air or anything to this one. Light bars on the back. We're good to go. Get some fuel and head three hours up the road. So I pulled in here, parked right here was the state's uh, weights and measures guy who checks all the pumps and makes sure they're accurate and all that stuff. And uh, I was like, they're not ripping me off, are they? He goes, nope, just got done checking all of them. Everything's good, so good job, Ed Stop. Thanks for not ripping me off. So that's something a lot of people asked about in a lot of older videos when I chill fueling up a lot. 
uh, how you fuel up in Oregon all by yourself. Well, diesel vehicles, commercial vehicles, stuff like that have always been able to fuel their own. And I think the law's even turned over now where anybody can anywhere. But there's a lot of these uh, CFN stations or Pacific Pride. CFN is Commercial Fueling Network, which I have an account with. I'm trying not to wipe out their pumps. And uh, there's these stations here, these unattended stations. And you have to have an account with CFN or Pacific Pride or whoever is the brand of the station. And look here, it's a Cybertruck. Let's see if we can rear end it. I've never seen one in person. Looks like they forgot to paint it. All right. um, yeah, you have an account with CFN or Pacific Pride, whoever the, the franchise or whatever it is. I guess that's what it's called. And then uh, the individual stations are owned and operated by local fuel companies. That one is Ed Stuff, and they supply them with fuel. And that one card I have works at these CFN stations um, all across the country. And I also have Pacific Pride as well, which is another one that's obviously more towards the West Coast. And then I can go fuel up at the commercial stations wherever, and you get commercial prices on fuel that go straight to your once a month account, and you pay your fuel bill once a month, which is good because you don't have to pay it once a month. But it sucks because you have to pay a whole month's worth of fuel at once, and on trucks like this, it's. Uh, I pay in the neighborhood of $4,000 a month, four to $5,000 a month in the busy time for my trucks. And uh, that adds up. It's almost like summertime's back today. I think it's supposed to be 75. Blue sky and nice. I think we got one more storm coming up that's gonna maybe get a little more snow up on the mountain, but. I think the bulk of winter is over. I know it's only March and I'm saying that, but we'll get a little more here and there, but the big the big stuff I think is pretty well done. It's a nice, nice day out. Okay, we are here. And uh, this was kind of a screwed up one to get back into. I had to come up that driveway, nose in over there through that door of the shop that's open, back around this whole corner, and into that hole there, without swinging my front end into all this stuff over here. But, we made it, so. We're going to key for it, we're gonna get everything undone, starting with our light on the back. It's not the straightest ever, but I don't, have a whole lot of options with how much crap they got piled in this little yard so you just get enough oh this one first take you off back over here you go and then I like to take the battery off just so it's not bouncing around in there in the toolbox goes back here, that goes there, make this easier, okay.
the other side so I can watch and put the parking brake back on. Bring it down and back. Should we put the brake back on? I put this one strap on here. This is the second truck I have ever had while towing have the steering drift off to the side. So I just threw that strap on to keep it somewhat in place. Parking brake on. So we can set it down. Yeah, here's the key to it. You own it or? Yeah, I own it. Okay, all done. Wiggling out of here without running any more trucks over. Got that one dropped off nice and easy. They said it's probably just gonna sit for a while because it's got a lot of damage. And uh, up next. We are gonna head over to Gerlock Towing, which is right down the road here, some super cool dudes. So I'm gonna go over and bother them for a little bit before we head back uh, towards home.